Yours is, yours is Senator Maloney. Thank you, uh, Alessia. Yeah, you have four minutes. Look, I, I, um, I'm going to be short and sweet in this one. A, a, the, the actual title of the motion speaks for itself. Uh, I have been contacted by a number of parents with children with Down syndrome, and they have told me that they are constantly driving uh, their children and actually uh, their adult children to and from work, to and from swimming or from physiotherapy or for whatever they need and they don't ever receive any help at all, uh, high up or low down. Now, I, what I'm asking here is that the primary medical cert uh, be extended to cover people with Down syndrome because while I understand the criteria, and I'm pretty sure in your answer you're going to lay out the criteria for me for someone to qualify for um, a primary medical cert, I know it off by heart and I know it about they need to have, be without the use of one limb or without the use of two limbs or whatever. But a lot of people with Down syndrome are very immobile, you know, they're overweight and they, they find it very difficult to get around. And I wonder, Minister, do you know who William Lucan is? I guess a lot of people in here probably wouldn't, and I didn't myself until I did a little bit of research. William Lockman is a 26-year-old Special Olympic gold medalist who is the first person with Down syndrome in Ireland to receive his driver's license. The first and only one, Minister. There is only one person in, we take the island of Ireland, there's one person in Northern Ireland and one person in Southern Ireland with Down syndrome that has a driving license. So you can now imagine the pressure on parents uh, with, with, with uh, uh, a, a child uh, with uh, Down syndrome. Um, Minister, I, I, I had a number of parents come to me. When you're living in rural Ireland, as you well know, uh, you're, you're many miles from the facilities, you're many miles from a little job that they do maybe with Down syndrome Ireland or in, under the network for people with disabilities or at some employers who take on someone with a disability and they are given a few hours every week. But they have to be driven in because obviously they can't drive themselves. And I've had a mother who is a widow and who has to do all the driving herself. She hasn't even got anyone to share it with her. She's exhausted. She's, she's completely tied down and she's under a lot of financial uh, uh, difficulties and stress trying to drive in and out all the time which uh, it, in some cases it's two journeys because you drive in and you go home and you come back in and collect them so I'm just asking that that uh, I have been fighting for a primary medical cert for people with neurological diseases such as Parkinson's and motor neuron and other thing, other diseases and I'm finding it very difficult it, the, the criteria is very very rigid and even despite um, uh, appeals to Dunleary to, to, to uh, on the matter, they still don't seem to win it. They say, oh, it's legislation, it's laid down, the criteria is there, and there are also the criteria. So I just would ask that, 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 that the minister would look at this in a sympathetic uh, way and say, yes, these, these people will more than likely never drive. They will probably always be a passenger or a, a passenger with a disability. And uh, we, I would just ask that, that, that the primary medical cert would be extended to facilitate people with Down syndrome. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Minister. Uh, thank you, Cahirla. Uh, I'd firstly like to thank um, the Senator for raising this issue. And <coughs> I'm also conscious of the fact that you did say you've heard it all before. Uh, so I'm, I'm conscious of that. But I'm also conscious of that, the, that the, the Minister records, for understand. Finance gave me a, a job to do this evening. So it's important to read into the re record, you know, from. Uh, uh, for, you know, to, from a formality point of view. Um, just to give a, a brief description of the scheme as it currently stands, uh, the scheme provides relief from vehicle registration tax and VAT on the purchase of a sp specially adapted vehicle, <coughs> repayment of excise duty on fuel, and an exemption from motor tax to drivers and passengers with disabilities who fulfil the medical criteria required to qualify for the scheme. The primary legislation authorising the Minister for Finance to make regulations pro providing for tax concessions to disabled drivers and passengers is contained in Section 92 of the Finance Act 1989, and the regulations introduced subsequently to govern the scheme, including the eligib eligibility criteria contained in the Disabled Drivers and Disabled Passengers Regulations 90 1994. 
Currently, to qualify for the scheme, an applicant must have a permanent and severe physical disability within the terms of the regulations and satisfy one of the six qualifying criteria outlined in the regulations. The senior medical officer for the relevant local health service executive administrative area makes a professional clinical determination as to whether an individual applicant satisfies the medical criteria. A successful applicant is provided with a primary medical certificate, which is required under the regulations, to claim the reliefs prov provided for in the regulations. An unsuccessful applicant can appeal the decision um, of the senior medical officer to the Disabled Drivers Medical Board of Appeal, which makes a new clinical determination in respect of the individual. The regulations mandate that the Medical Board of Appeal is independent in the exercise of its functions to ensure the integri integrity of its clinical determinations. After six months, a citizen can reapply if there is a deterioration in their condition. The six qualifying criteria, as the Senator no doubt will be aware of, are both strict and precise and relate only to very specific physical disabilities. They are uh, be wholly or almost wholly without the use of both legs, be wholly with the use of one leg and almost wholly without the use of the other leg, uh, such that the applicant is severely restricted as to movement of the lower limbs, be without both hands or without both arms, be without one or both legs, be wholly or almost wholly without the use of both hands or arms and wholly or almost wholly without the use of one leg, have the medical condition of dwarfism and have serious difficulties of movement of the lower limbs. The scheme and qualifying criteria were designed specifically for those with severe uh, physical disabilities. The Minister for Finance frequently receives correspondence from applicants who do not meet the qualifying criteria but feel that they should benefit from the scheme. Those also include citizens advocating for the addition of intellectual disabilities to the qualifying criteria. While the Minister very much sympathises with those who do not qualify for the scheme, he cannot, uh, given the scale and scope of the scheme, expand it further within the current context of constrained resources. The Senator will appreciate that the scheme represents a significant tax expenditure. Between the vehicle registration tax and VAT foregone and the repayment of excise on fuel used by members of the scheme, the scheme represented a cost of €43.5 million Euro to the Exchequer in 2013. This figure does not include the revenue foregone to the Local Government Fund in the respect of the relief from motor tax provided to members of the scheme. In terms of the numbers of beneficiaries of the scheme in 2013, 4,355 citizens availed of the vehicle registration tax and VAT relief, and 11,436 availed of the repayment of excise on, on the fuel element of the scheme. The Minister for Finance recognises that the scheme plays an important role in expanding the mobility of citizens with disabilities and has managed to maintain the relief at current levels throughout the crisis and despite the requirement for, uh, for significant fiscal consolidation. While recognising the Senator's position in the still challenging fiscal environment, the Minister has no plans to expand the medical criteria beyond the six currently provided for in the Disabled Drivers and Disabled Passengers Regulation 1994. Thank you, Minister. Senator, Thank you. Let's give her a copy brief. <coughs> I, I guess it is a bad time to come looking for something new, uh, but I do think it's important to highlight the plight of people with Down syndrome. Uh, okay, I'm probably my time isn't isn't great, uh, but I do hope that going forward we will find um, it, it, that we will have the finances prop to expand this scheme further. It does seem quite a lot that uh, the cost is 43.5 million when only 4,355 citizens availed of the, uh, the vehicle registration and VAT relief and 11,400 availed of the payment of excise fuel. But I'm sure the figures are correct and if they're, if they're calculated out. But I, I hope, and like, I, for as long as I'll be here, I'll raise this again and maybe going forward in the future that we will have the finances to, ex uh, to expand it uh, two people, uh, as you said there, in one, the, one of the criteria was it was um, have the medical condition of dwarfism, which, okay, I absolutely agree that those the people with dwarfism should have it. Um, but at the end of that, it says, and have serious difficulties of movement of the lower limbs. A lot of people with Down syndrome do have serious um, difficulty with the movement of lower limbs. Now, I know it was referring to dwarfism in this occasion, but it could be expanded, you know. But anyway, Minister, I know that I'm not going to get the answer I want tonight anyway. So so, but I will continue to highlight it going, this going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.